Hello everyone and welcome. I am Andy Bryan from The Soul Pathway and today I am actually here with uh, a man named Paul and uh, Paul is an incredible spiritual individual who runs a business called uh, The Spiritual Voice you know, which you'll find out more about a bit later but he has an inspiring and motivational um, soul journey which he's going to share with you today. And for those of you who haven't tuned into the show before, this is a show where I interview, you know, inspiring individuals from around the world, spiritual individuals who's, who've really embraced who they are and really connected with their soul, um, really to inspire you as individuals to live in alignment with who you are, to connect with your soul pathway and really connect with the true essence of what it means to live the life you want to lead. So. I'm excited to be interviewing uh, Paul from The Spiritual Voice to share his journey and story. Before we get into his story though, I'd like to find out more, Paul, about who you are today and what it is you do. Sure. Uh, hi, everyone. And I'm very happy to be here uh, with you as well as with you, Andy. And uh, today I lead The Spiritual Voice, which is a platform for uh, spiritual and holistic professionals and practitioners, as well as for people that are looking at making small steps of improvements in their lives. And we've got a podcast by the name of the, uh, the Spiritual Voice, and we provide services so that we can make accessible the life-transforming tools that people uh, like you and other professionals have created to help us on all of our journeys. Fantastic. And, and I know um, from connecting with your show and connecting with your work that you do some uh, incredible work as a whole, you know, and, uh, and it's amazing to see you, you um, inspiring, and motivating others to, to really live their dreams and connect with their own spiritual voice because it's all about their spiritual voice, isn't it? Yes, it is. And I feel that each person has a message. And regardless of how we express that in our lives, whether that be artistically, in our relationship with our coworkers, with our parents, with the people we love, our friends, the stranger at the bus station, or to our businesses, we all have in our message a golden light that has the ability to transform the way that we live. And I think that's one of the beauty of living as humans is that we have this creative potential definitely no i completely agree and um you know i think that steps quite quite nicely into the hero's journey and uh really stepping into your own spiritual voice um because i imagine uh, like myself that you may not have had this voice in you before you may have been you know, I don't know a huge amount about your journey at the moment, but maybe you were in your original world, that place of pain and discomfort. You weren't in that place to share as you do today. So tell me a bit more about your journey and story, your hero's journey, and what's led you to where you are today. If we look back at, first of all, your original world, was there, before you even entered the world of spirituality, before you entered the world of the business that you do today, was there that place of pain and discomfort for you? that led you on that journey of seeking the life you lead today? For sure. And it was quite different. I was an atheist for about 10 years of my life. So I did not believe in anything is remotely spiritual, which is interesting now that I have uh, the spiritual voice. And my world was surrounded by uh, spreadsheets, calculations, and data because I'm actually a CPA and a licensed auditor. And that was my environment. My main goal in life was to get to a high paying position to literally get power, either through a private firm or later on through private companies, and then get either a CEO or a partner or a CFO type of, uh, of title. And it's very interesting because mm -hmm. although I had strong relationships with my friends and my family, there was always this thought at the back of my mind saying, how can I get the most out of them? And there was yeah. this very uh, extractive mindset in how I was living my life. And that was the source of my pain. And that's how I started becoming more and more uh, having depressive emotions 
uh, losing sight of where my life was really going. And I had been uh, building anger and rage inside of me, although I really didn't admit that to myself while I was experiencing it. Yeah. So those emotion that, emotions that came up with you, did you feel like it was it was more in, of an incongruency with who you are? Because for me, it sounds like that, like within you thinking, wow, why am I doing this? Why, why am I, you know, living this life when it's it's not authentically me, you know, and I can I can feel that now. Would you say that was how you felt at the time? Yes, and I also felt betrayed by my parents. I felt betrayed by society. And it seemed like the trajectory that I was taking, I didn't know how to get off of it other than uh, trying to do more of it. And I'll make it very tangible. Uh, once I started feeling that deep pain inside of me after a eight-year relationship, uh, breaking up before my wedding and, and other unfortunate events, I decided that I should go to law school and become a lawyer because the combination of a CPA and having a law designation or being a lawyer would then give me sufficiently sufficient money and power to buy my happiness. And I feel like that anger was boiling in because that was the only thing I knew and I blame everyone around me for that. Mm. You know, and I, and, I, and I really honor you for saying that and appreciate you for saying that because, you know, the hero's journey is really one of breaking free from society, the systems, the cultures of which we live, the, the confines and the, and the shackles that we live by. And just by you saying that you felt betrayed by society, even betrayed by your parents, that's every system that we're trying to break free from in terms of the ego and really to, to truly embrace who we are. So... Stepping away from that then into your law then, you know, in some ways you felt like that was, oh, okay, I'm, I'm going to be living in alignment with who I am now. This is, this is who I'm going to be. This is the right path for me. But <laughs> <laughs> what was that like for you? So. Well, it's interesting because I dodged that bullet barely. I received my application or the confirmation that I was accepted in the law program at McGill. And when I got that letter of acceptance, I literally puked my guts out. And that strong visceral response, obviously I was not expecting it. This was supposed to be good news. And that's when I started questioning what is really going on and the message was so strong that I started looking inside and seeing, is there any other alternative to that? Which uh, there was an answer that came in. It's very bizarre. I had looked at a few books on shamanism in the Amazon rainforest, and I was reading a book at that moment. And I could see the book as I was puking my guts out. And I decided in that instance that I would be leaving everything behind and connect with these ancient traditions. And uh, on that same day, I actually made all of the arrangements for that to happen because I was dealing with agoraphobia and paranoia. And I knew that if I didn't make the decision now, I would most likely never make it and I'd end up going to McGill. <laughs> oh, that is that is awesome. So you, you obviously had those physical symptoms, the things that came up. I was going to ask you about that refusal to call, refusal to go on that adventure, because we, I feel we all always have that refusal. But for me, if I was from this very moment, you you even skipped that refusal to call because you didn't let yourself go there. You were like, I, I'm going to do it now because I need to, <laughs> I need to do it, sort of thing. Would you say that was the case? Well, actually, I, I was still refusing the call before that because I had changed uh, jobs uh, from being in a private firm with auditing and then I went in another type of organization. I also uh, spent about two years after that relationship breakup uh, doing a lot more of partying, going out in the clubs and doing a lot of things that were avoiding looking at myself uh, you know, uh, involved in some of the drug scenes and things like that. And I was building up that pain. And I would say that was the refusal of the call because obviously 
there was a deep yearning inside of me. There was pain. There was a desire for change. But I was just waiting for the next promotion. And then eventually I decided to apply to law school and do all those steps instead to accentuate the trajectory that I was going in instead of looking for alternatives. Yeah, I know what you, I know what you mean now, yeah. So that refusal was, oh, I've been denying myself for so long. And as soon as you have had that adverse reaction, it was like that awakening to say, look, this is what I need to do now. This is, this is how I'm going to be shifting my life, even if it might shift upside down, it may seem at that time. Yes, and, and I was afraid because I had not had such a visceral reaction up until that moment. And I knew that also the agoraphobia that I mentioned and the paranoia was building up. I was then afraid of going outside in the early evening, even before it was dark. And it's almost like I had that flash and I could see that I was spiraling downwards and a change needed to occur. I didn't have much of a solution, but I also feel uh, now being a spiritual person that that's why uh, that book and that information had been placed in my hands at that very precise moment. Now that's that's fantastic, isn't it? It's, it is amazing. And I'm actually a lover of, of shamanism myself. I haven't specifically studied it, but I feel like I live by the the essence of, of shame, shamanism in some ways in terms of connecting to nature, connecting to who I am. You know, um, but it's, it is a part of my path, no doubt. So delving into this deep, dark forest, e entering this unknown world of ed incredible adventure, you know, opens up, you know, it does open up that can of worms, doesn't it, in some ways? You know, this this whole whole new world starts to exist from there. So what was what was what was that like delving in for the first time and, and entering that place of of fear of the unknown and, and not knowing what's what's going to be occurring, but know that you feel like you were on the right path at that time. It was mind blowing and I discovered a reality that was totally foreign to what I could even imagine. I, I can't even place that into words, but what struck me the most was the healing process. And I have been working with some of the plant medicines. And one of the first events that happened is I got confronted with that deep rage and anger inside of me. And I said earlier that I was not really aware that that was sitting and living inside of me. That's when I saw it. And I was literally afraid of the sound and movement of my own breathing. And that's when I said, well, obviously I'm dealing with paranoia and anxiety and all of these different things. I mean, each single breath that I'm taking is driving fear inside of me. And I could see and sense the rage towards the institutions and towards my parents and more particularly towards uh, my father that I had been cultivating. And it seems like the events that had happened in my childhood I had created a logical sequence that that's why I was in the boat that I was in, in this precise yeah. moment. And then I had to come to that realization and that acceptance that he had not been out there to hurt me and that I didn't, I was not forced to live my life as I had been living it because mm. of those events. No, I love it. And, and it's interesting you say that because I do a lot of work on archetypes and it's interesting we start our journey we live by certain archetypes you know we live shackled you know in some ways and as we move forward we become the seeker and uh, just doing just sharing a video about this earlier but the, the seeker is someone that seeks the truth that seeks seeks the truth within and also externally as well but often when you seek the truth and whether it's externally or externally internally or externally sorry it brings up that anger and resentment, whether it's to that society or whether it's whether it's to to our parents at that moment. So it's interesting you mention that because that seeker brings that up, and obviously you'd learn a lot through that that allowed you to create more of that balance and harmony within yourself as you went about your journey. Would you say that's the case? Yes, yes, I, I would, and 
what I also discovered is that I also had to apply that truth. I had to apply the knowledge that I had gained. And obviously, I mean, we could have a whole conversation about what happened in those several months in, in the jungle, right? Yeah. But I think we would be missing the point because when I came back, everything was still waiting there for me. I was still a CPA. My father was still there. My parents were there. The system was in place. You know, everything had been waiting for me. And that's where I had the challenge of saying, well, how are you going to apply this knowledge? And how are you now going to choose to live your life differently? How are you going to reconcile what you discovered with what's obviously still uh, your current constructed reality i mean i had a mortgage uh, my friends were the same everything was in place yeah. and i had to make those important decisions like instead of going to the club every other weekend well i started taking up yoga and yeah. i think as people are listening this doesn't have to be yoga you know it could be knitting it could it could be anything that you yeah. feel called to but if if i didn't make those changes in my life and I didn't continue that reflection process, then I believe that I would have easily been able to sweep all that under the carpet. Definitely. If we look back at back at what you learned in the jungle, though, what what what, were your, what would you say some of your biggest learnings? Because that that's in some ways part of your road of trials. But obviously, when you came back, there was more integration to be to be had in terms of integrating what you learned into to your society, your own system. Wow. Well, for one, I discovered, and, and this is part of my belief system and my experience, that the world we live in is much more malleable than we believe it to be. And I was doing work very consistently. And there was this moment where everything seemed like it was a dream. Literally, where when you're in a dream, the scenery can change, the characters can change, uh, what's happening, day, night, all of these things were in constant flux. And I was even talking with the shaman that was talking a, a foreign tribal language, and somehow we understood each other, and he was providing me some guidance. And awesome. this is where it totally eliminated my purely materialistic perception of the world. And that's when I started having a belief that uh, how I direct my energy, what I do, how I cultivate my consciousness, how I can become more aware, how I can be present, how I interact with other people has a, a, a very tangible, meaningful impact. And I could extrapolate this by saying that my uh, my current belief i mean even last year i said that uh, i needed to move out of where i was living in the ottawa area and this would happen uh, very quickly and next thing you know i ended up getting uh, married to my wonderful wife and she lives in the united states and i immigrated and it happened so quickly but i believe that i manifested that that's something that I was able to create now. The specifics of exactly who that person was, where I would be moving. Did I, you know, orchestrate that on a plan? No, not really. But just kind of like you construct your dream with different pieces of your experience. Mm. And that creates that reality. But you may not necessarily be mapping out every second of your dream. It's interesting, isn't it? I love, love the story. And um, it's interesting how sometimes... We, we want to put something together, so we, we formulate a plan to put it together, and we've got these intentions inside of our mind for a long period of time, but we've got that we put that plan into place, and then throughout that process, we realize actually we've, we've actually manifested what, what we've desired through, before we've even got there. You know, I've had some of those experiences recently, and I was like, I've not even, I've not even shared any of this yet, and, and I'm attracting this into my life. You know, what, what this is upon me you know and it's it's incredible so so it sounds like you've you learned so much through through the jungle that you that you integrated into your life and congratulations on your marriage and your your um your emigration to the states that's amazing so but um if we go back to then moving 
coming back from the jungle and into everyday life again, what was it? What was it like actually integrating what you learned? Because we can we can go outside of ourselves. We can learn so much externally, but it's only when we enter the world again, or the, the so-called world at which we live, anyway, in some ways, that we actually need to think. Actually, I need to integrate this into to my life now. It, it's who I am, you know. Um, so how did you how did you find that and go about doing that? Very, very challenging. I uh, <laughs> was dating someone at the time, and she picked me up at the airport. And I must admit, I did not even recognize her. And I was so far from conventional reality that I didn't really understand what was going on. I mean, I remember being in the car, and I was looking at the buildings, and I couldn't fully make sense of this. And then I'm supposed to get a job because I had quit my job before and make this money and then start socializing with everyone. I, I really was detached. And one of the reasons is I, I would, had been using the plant medicines for such a prolonged period of time. And it took me about six months before I was able to find, apply and get hired uh, successfully for a job. And it was because none of them appealed to me. And most of the jobs that came or that were the opportunities had to do with the military industrial complex. And I just didn't want to have anything to do with that. I mean, I would have rather been homeless than participate in that. And I found a, a job using my CPA skills for a not-for-profit that was uh, helping some of their research and education. And that is something that I could stand behind. And that's when I started realizing that I could use the skills that I had to help further causes that were in alignment with the world that I wanted to create for myself and other people, as well as my values. But then it was a grind still, you know, it was in a cubicle environment, uh, all of this. And, and I still remember uh, things felt alien, sitting at that computer, doing the small chat with the coworkers. And I blended in some of what was my own. I, uh, I had these dreams about playing the didgeridoo, which I did not consider myself a musically inclined <laughs> person. And I ended up getting one. And within a month, I was able to play the didgeridoo and the, uh, use the circular breeding. And I brought that a few times in the office. And I was doing sound massages to some of my coworkers. So you can just imagine how much of an unconventional accountant I was by then. <laughs> that, is, that is quite a story, actually. <laughs> well, that must be a lot of fun for them, though. They must have really enjoyed that. So. <laughs> so I know we're 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 probably uh, almost towards the end of the half an hour, but I know we've got so much more to share. So if I if we move on to so we've gone through your road of trials, we've gone through in some ways your epiphany and your big shift in terms of the approach and the ordeal. Um, if I was to ask you then, you know, on the road back, the road back is all about giving back and making a difference, passing your message on becoming that spiritual voice like like you with your podcast you know um if i was to ask you if we look at the atonement the atonement is a massive part of our journey and that's for me that's full integration of every all aspects of yourself your ego yourself and your shadow to really connect with your soul and, and embrace your spirit at the same time as well if i was to ask you did do you feel like there was a time towards the end of that part of your journey, when you reached an atonement for yourself? That's a good question. And it becomes bizarre because when it happened, later on I realized that it didn't fully happen. And it kept shifting. I had been developing this weird relationship with money after this whole journey and the production that we did in, in society. So mm -hmm. I had uh, embraced that, let that go. And then I thought that I had re-embraced it. And then I thought I had embraced the uh, anger and relationships. And it's like peeling the layers of an onion where every year I discover new facets of myself and how I have been kidding myself. 
So I mm -hmm. don't think that I'm at this stage of completion, but mm -hmm. I also feel like the hero's journey really completes itself with a new journey opening. And you might be on several different journeys at different stages. What I do know yeah, is that I'm much more conscious of how I'm going through those stages. I am conscious of my relationship and with my dilemma with uh, money and power and other people that I care about. And that's being reflected in the journey of uh, my business and also making sure that there's a part where I give back such as through the podcast, but then also knowing, well, where is the part where I need to respect and honor myself as well in, in what I'm doing? Yeah, definitely. I completely agree. And it's, it's, it's all about that balance and harmony within yourself, isn't it? That's what it's, uh, the truth is all about. And I no notice you said there that there's cycles of your journey. There's always continuous cycles and, and you're always growing and evolving. Um, would you feel like there was one atonement for you that really stood out though as you as you shifted one place and you moved to another level of your journey let's say or another cycle that maybe maybe quite stood out for you in in the ways that wow i've i feel like a completion of myself in a certain aspect of of my journey or, or where i was at the time yes and it has to do with my relationship with my father which is interesting because that's you know, atonement with the father is the archetypal phase, but it, it was literal in my case. And most of my life, I've held the harsh feelings towards him, and I blamed him, and I was angry. And I can say that now I much better understand his journey, and I realize that he's always loved me through the trials and tribulations and, you know, the mistakes as well as the, the good things that he had been doing for me. And that's what has allowed me now to embrace a much more harmonious relationship with myself. Love it. Absolutely love it. Yeah. And, and the atonement of father is, is a big one, isn't it? In, in, in an archetypal thing, you know, and it's, it's fantastic. So, Let's let's look at you today then. You're the hero in your own life, in your own business, in your own spiritual world, you know, and in the material world as well, obviously. If I was to ask you, Paul, who are you today based on your journey and story? Whew, that's a, that's actually hard to define. And I would use a, a you know, something not so concrete, I would say that I'm, I'm a dream, really. I'm aspirations. I'm ideas. I'm, I'm evolving. I don't attach so much to uh, what I'm accomplishing or badges of honors or, or defining myself by uh, the milestones and the goals that I'm achieving. But I really feel like I'm there to help people, including myself, realize that we can literally dream the world that we want to live in. Definitely, no, I completely agree as well. And, and it's and it is connecting with that spiritual aspect of who you are, really connecting with that unconditional love of yourself and and allowing yourself to manifest what you truly desire in life. At least that's what I believe nowadays. If I was to ask you a question, then slightly different from the last one, but in some ways very similar at the same time, what is it that you do today and why do you do it based on your journey? Right, and, and that's uh, <laughs> easier to answer. So uh, I do several things. Uh, I do lead the spiritual voice, and with that there is the podcast where I feature spirituality from all walks of life. And that's very near and dear to my heart because we're presenting different perspectives. And I don't think that any one of us holds deep truth, but we can all point to it. And I embrace point of views that I agree with, that I don't agree with. And I'm just offering all of that so that people can decide what they need and what's good for them. And then mm -hmm. on a more business side, I, I do help spiritual and uh, holistic professionals expand their business, but I've also embraced my skills as a, a strategist, as a, 
a marketer, as a process and systems person, and now I'm actually building those systems for people that want to scale their work and their businesses. And I would not have expected that because mm -hmm. that's a little too similar to the skill sets that I was putting to use as a CPA. And I would say that that was part of the other integration process is realizing that I don't need to bury those gifts and I also don't need to limit myself uh, to working with people that call themselves spiritual mm -hmm. to actually do good work in the world because I think a lot of people would say, no, I'm not spiritual, but they're awesome human beings and what they're doing is great and fantastic. And again, I completely agree. I, I, I completely agree. And it's, it's great to see the, the work that people do. And like you said, that integration of self, all parts of yourself. I've, I would say I'm a very spiritual individual today, but I know I need to, you can, I need to embrace that techie side of who I am, and I do today. You know, I neglected that for ages. Oh, I'm not a techie, you know. Although I am really a techie, I know what I'm doing in the tech world, but just push it to one side. I, I want to be seen as a spiritual person, but but don't neglect that part of yourself that that is who you are. You know, because it's all aspects of who you are, isn't it? So it is, and I mean, I am quite gifted at strategy, research, systems, and designs. And I don't think that the fact that I can optimize a marketing strategy takes away from the awesome work that I'm doing uh, with the spiritual voice and the podcast and some of the other teachings that I'm sharing. Definitely not, and I completely agree. Um, you've you've got some incredible work and uh, a lot of good good teaching and training for, for spiritual people in business and and obviously that that those strategies work and apply to many other people as well like you said where can we find out more about yourself when you work though <laughs> well that's it that's a good question so visiting my website the spiritual voice.com and from there you're going to be able to get in touch with me there's a, my email a contact form the podcast and you'll see some of the services that I do and uh, if you have questions about this, about your own journey, I would certainly love to uh, you know, entertain that conversation with you and help you out. And if you're looking for some of that business support, then I'll be more than happy to do that. And uh, it may be best to contact me through some of the contact forms there if you're looking at something a bit more complex than uh, uh, some of the basic offerings that I have there. And I would love to say that uh, I thought about creating a website, paulcousineau.com. Don't go there because uh, I thought that my name doesn't <laughs> is not very good for saying verbally in a show like this. So I haven't actually gotten that URL so far. <laughs> well, I have a, I have a, a, a slight confession to make that I, I've used your first name throughout the, the, the podcast today, throughout the show. Because I was, uh, I knew that I would potentially, you know, pronounce it wrong. You know, your surname, and I know you as Paul anyway, so it's uh, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and uh, so, but you will be able to find me on thespiritualvoice uh, dot com. <laughs> Perfect. And for those of you who want the links to to the website, they will be below this video anyway on YouTube. And if you're connecting with this video on my website, all the links will be there as well, and even within the posts on Facebook. So with that, I will say say thank you all for listening, um, and thank you, Paul, for sharing your incredible hero's journey. Thanks, Andy, for this opportunity. It's been a real pleasure uh, being here with you. And I look forward to seeing you all soon. Bye for now. <laughs>